Uh, when we look across the week here, uh, it's not been a great week for stocks. S&P down one spot, 3%. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average down 1.8% on the week. NASDAQ off 1% on the week. Not a great week for crypto either, we should say. Bitcoin uh, looks like trading here at 45712 uh, That is uh, That's off about 1% on the day, about 9% on the week. Still up uh, fractionally on the month, about 0.15%. Year to date up 57%. And for the year, up 340%. Obviously, considerable gains if you got in at the beginning of the year. Same story, actually, when we look at Ethereum uh, off on the day, about 3% trading right now at 3,320. Uh, week to date, not a good week, off 15%. One month, Ethereum up 5%. Year to date, up 350%. One year, 12 month trailing uh, up 805%. These are all indicators of just how volatile these markets are. Well, I was, I was laughing at the how with the serious face can you talk about, you know, asset prices like the S&P up 42%, whatever it is. And then suddenly like Ethereum up 800 and whatever percent. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. But it's, you know, looking at those crypto markets, they're volatile, as we know. Um, for me, they've all been following pretty much the pattern since um, that I've been looking at, which is that Ethereum now is following Bitcoin's pattern in 2017. Um, Bitcoin now is following Bitcoin 2013. Solana's following Bitcoin, um, Ethereum in 2017. It's weird. They're all so similar to previous network effect phases. Yeah. They're just in different phases. And these kind of corrections are pretty normal. Um, I still think it's all to play for for the end of the year. I think we'll see a huge run up in this stuff. Yeah, it's following the same curve, as you suggest. Obviously, this is uh, a thesis that you came out within the exponential age, uh, mapping out the rate of growth uh, of wallet addresses compared to price. Correlation seems to be holding broadly across the board here. Yeah, I mean, I was even looking, expecting that we should see Ethereum having this kind of 20% correction. It should be a few days and then should rally again because that's pretty much what Bitcoin did in 2017 after it had its corrective phase, got near the high, kind of failed at the high and then rocketed higher. So it's kind of, it all rhymes a lot. And you know, once you put it in that perspective, everyone can just relax. All right, Rob, before people yell at us, before we get into crypto, Let's talk a little bit about what's happening in capital markets. Obviously, a seventh month long rally here going on uh, in US equities, a central bank that keeps threatening to pull away the punch bowl. I know we have a lot to talk about with crypto, but let's scratch the macro itch. What are you thinking when you look at that? Um, you know, I've been saying the same thing for two months, three months now on daily briefing is the US economy is slowing. The Fed is going to taper potentially into a slowdown and they will pivot. This is, you know, myself, David Rosenberg, Jim Bianco, um, I think Darius Dale, there's a whole bunch of us saying the same thing. Um, it would be weird to tighten. I think the rate of growth of balance sheet will go to zero um, as they kind of slow down and then they will have to expand the balance sheet. I look at the Citibank Economic Surprises Index, also known as the SESI, and I've been talking about this for a few months now, saying it's going to cross zero. And that means that the economic indicators are coming out, economic data is coming out weaker than forecast. It is now currently at negative 68. Um, so it's firmly negative and should keep going for a while longer. So that tells you that the people are over enthusiastic with the rate of growth of the uh, US economy. And I think we will end up seeing that play out. But step back, as I always encourage people to do, and I'm looking at the chart of 10 year bond yields, they've gone nowhere for two months. They came off a lot earlier in the year as people got they over extrapolated the inflation trend and bond yields have been trading sideways at around this 133, 134 level for a long time. The dollar, the other 10-year treasury is correct. Uh, the dollar, the other big macro variable, flatters a pancake over the same period of time. Uh, gold not managing to do much. And the equity market has been grinding higher. But really, it's not been a very macro world out there right now. I think we're in an inflection point. Um, today, um, uh, this week I interviewed, and it's out today, uh, Lakshman from ECRI, Economic Cycles Institute, and I picked his brains about this. You know, where are are we in the business cycle he sees exactly the same as i do which is the business cycle is slowing doesn't we're not talking about a recession here what we're talking about is um that the business cycle comes down and we'll probably see more stimulus to come in due course so i think it, it's all playing out as expected but economies don't move at the speed of markets right. markets want to you know price in everything every 30 seconds or every one second uh economies move like super tankers and super tankers take a long time to turn so 
We're still in that turning phase. And I think that the final quarter of this year and the first quarter of next year, and maybe even the first half of next year will be significantly slower than the market expects. Question to you, Ralph, uh, from JP. The question is, uh, do you think of Bitcoin as a leading indicator for equities? And perhaps more broadly, what do you think the relationship is between the digital asset markets and the macro slash capital asset markets? On a broad basis, zero. They're, they're not, they're, it's a non-correlated asset. The only time it's correlated is in a risk off, which is a correlation to liquidity, not to the S&P or other things, because liquidity is a function of money in, money out. Other than that, it's non-correlated, except for the fact that they are correlated to the expansion of the Fed balance sheet. That's not because suddenly people in crypto are being given money by the Federal Reserve and they're all putting it into crypto. It's none of that because they're devaluing the denominator, which is the value of fiat money, so all of these things look like they rise in price. Overall, no correlation, which is why it's such a beautiful asset to own. I think somebody said today that if you'd start at the beginning of the year with 1% in Solana and 99% in the S&P 500, you'd currently have something like 50% Solana, 50% S&P 500. That's diversification. What caused the recent flash crash in Bitcoin? Um, so I suppose you can speculate about the causes. You could talk about a buy the rumor, sell the news effect, perhaps in El Salvador. You could look at on-chain metrics. But I would say the single most important thing to understand about the flash crash isn't what caused it, but to know that they will happen again and they will happen with regularity. That's the nature of these markets is to have these volatility uh, incidents, events happen periodically. Uh, and it's something that you just have to get used to if you're looking at this space. I'm curious to hear your thoughts though, Ralph. I mean, the point is I don't care. <laughs> Not about price act. I just looking for a reason after something happened for some something that happened is CNBC. It's, it's just not what we do. And serious market participants shouldn't be doing that either. As you rightly say, crypto overall is probably in the space 80% volatility asset. So therefore, if the S&P is a 10 vol asset, this would be the equivalent of, um, you know, a very insignificant one one and a half percent move in the S&P and you wouldn't be going oh my god what happened to the S&P after one and a half percent I'm looking at the bank right. banks index is down 1.2 percent today we're not going well what happened it's like, right it's just market noise right. just noise come to me when it goes down 50 percent, which it did earlier in the summer and then we had some reason but this just noise yeah a little bit of profit taking there on the rebalance um here's one uh, about capital markets and macro. Uh, the question comes to us for, from Confused John, which is a great uh, name, especially given the question. And the question is, Raul, uh, at what stage of a sell-off do you anticipate the Fed pivoting and returning back to increasing the balance sheet or, or stopping the taper? So who knows whether we get the sell-off because there's a Pavlovian response of which we're asking the question is, well, if the market falls at what level do the Fed come back in? So maybe the market doesn't fall because we see the economic data and we know the Fed are going to come back in. But let's assume it does. The question is, is where is the Fed put? Yeah. Most people suggest 15%. It's not very much. 15%, pretty normal. We just haven't had a big, we just haven't had a correction in a long time. But if 15% would stop tapering and get the Fed to say, well, then you know where it is. That's, it seems historically to suggest 15% is that level nowadays. So, you know, it's incredible because it kind of tells you that the tail, the price of really downside volatility is way too expensive because the Federal Reserve have got your back. And that's what played out in March last year. Yeah. It plummeted fast, but it went back up super fast because of what the Fed did. So in which case, downside volatility, downside skew is probably overpriced. Final thoughts. How would you frame what's happening? I know you've said there's not a whole lot happening, uh, but you have some broader thoughts about what are happening uh, in markets on the digital side, asset side, as well as on the macro side. Generally speaking, the last quarter of the year is when all the buses come. Everybody's job is to be on the lookout for those buses. Because A, you don't want to be run over by the bus and you want to catch the right bus. That's the entire investing game in one go. My bet is that the crypto bus is a rocket ship and not a bus. <laughs> and this last quarter will be extraordinary. But I don't want to get hit by the bus if I'm wrong because being hit by a rocket ship is quite painful. <laughs> I think the macro markets are also the buses start to come in, which is the slowdown in growth, i.e. a change in the macro narrative. That's all we need. Positive or negative change in the macro narrative drives opportunity. And I think that opportunity is coming. And I think it's in the I think it's in the realm of weaker bond yields, probably weaker markets for a period of time, then more stimulus. And that kind of ignites the growth stocks, uh, that whole exponential age thesis again um, and kind of shifts what people are focused on in markets, you know, shifts away 
from commodities back to technology. So I think that's all to come. I think people need to have patience, but you need to be scouring all of this because it's going to come soon because that's typically what happens. The whole year is usually made between September and December. So everyone should be sharpening their pencils, scanning the horizon and waiting to see which buses are coming along and don't get run over by the wrong bus.